Hello and welcome. This is Hike 360, and we're in New Brunswick, Canada, doing the Fundy Footpath Trail. Hey. Welcome to day three of our Fundy Footpath adventure. We are at the campsite we slept at last night. Take a look at the river that gave us such a challenge last night. It was uh, flooded and and uh, the currents were really fast. And now you can see it's probably about you know four or five inches, maybe six inches lower this morning than it was last night. Okay, one thing that we don't often do uh, is talk about how we prepare food. All right, snacks for today. Uh, I find that obviously calories are important, but I fluctuate in my desires between sweet and salty. So I have Rice Krispie Treat, I have trail mix, um, usually some kind of cheese and crackers, and a sausage stick. Um, that tends to really do good for me. <clears throat> what we've discovered lately, though, is uh, potato chips. Plain old potato chips. Always taste good. High in calorie, high in fat uh, for what we need right here, right? Yeah, I mean, for the weight that potato chips are, yeah. they have the most calories packed into them. Um, the oils, it just, it actually, we learned this this hack from an expert hiker, ultra runner at the bottom of Mount Massive in Colorado. When we were done with our five days on the Colorado Trail, and after summiting Mount Massive, we came down and there was this guy, a trail angel, he's reading a book, he's sitting in his chair, and he's got a cooler of, you know, drinks and beer and, and then um, some food for people coming off the mountain and we got chatting with him he was talking about how he would he finish the pct doing 30 plus miles a day and um you know where dad was really curious in in uh, the weight of the things that he was carrying and he said he's just he's always got potato chips doesn't bring a stove yeah he but, cold he cold soaks uh cold hydrates but he just he swore by the potato chips and we've picked up that and it it works it's it's massive yeah. Uh, and then for me, lunch is basically one of these uh, tuna packets. Works out really well for me. Ryan, what do you got? Um, so for snacks today, I've just got one of one of my bars. It's a Go Macro brand. Uh, I like them a lot. That's a quick 10 grams of protein, 10 grams of carbohydrates, and 10 grams of fats. Um, Well-rounded. Keeps me going. I got a fruit jerky, which REI and Whole Foods started carrying. Uh, it's two ingredients. It's a banana and cacao. Uh, so that's really good. That's what that looks like. And then I've got some goos, uh, just one goo. So that's going to help with the, uh, the amino acids, um, sodium and caffeine is what's in there. Uh, I've got those left over from, from races and runs I've done. So I just sort of threw it in there. I don't know if I would go out of my way to pack it. I guess I would with the through hikes. I think it's pretty important to, to have something like that or, or dad's cliff blocks. Um, so that should be good. Uh, and then lunch today I'm having, uh, I'm also trying a new brand that I saw at REI, the Wild Zora. So this is going to be a, a quinoa bowl. I wanted to turn on to uh, get this undergrowth. It's been a magical forest. Really just something else. We got a little ferns here. We just came out of moss. We had like four leaves and a clump of red berries before that. And uh, heck, what was before the berries? Ah, man, there's just been so much changing life forms here, plant life. Um, I'm expecting Rumpelstiltskin to pop out at any corner. <laughs> Okay, we're going to a little scenic spot here. We haven't seen the ocean in a bunch of hours. Wow. Yeah. Now this would have been a fun campsite. Yeah, well. Oh my gosh, no look rolling. at that cliff. Yeah, it's, it's a cliff. That is a cliff. Let's stay away from the edge. Oh, look at down the coastline. Let's see some of the other uh, points. Oh, wow.
All right, here we are at Telegraph Brook. The uh, easiest river crossing we've gotten to yet. All of these river crossings are, are serious river crossings. We got a beautiful waterfall back there. And as soon as we cross, we'll get down to the beach. Be a lot more difficult up there. Uh, more difficult up there. Uh, where are we going? I, I, let's go down to the beach real quick. And you can see the sun is out. So we originally thought we would be able to camp here. It is exposed, I guess right on this shelf here is a camp potential flat ground for a tent. We wouldn't have made it like that campsite we were at last night. That's the, that was the right place to be. Again, Nova Scotia is to the left on the other side of Fundy Bay. All right, hi. We're on the ledge of a cliff. Uh, this is Wolf Brook, and we're gonna walk a little bit, um, just to give you an idea how steep. So what we're finding is all of the, 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 the mountains here are all kind of the same size, and the rivers just carve out their path to the ocean. And so this is all basically erosion every time we go up and down. And that's what makes it so hard because it's not a gradual up and down it's just erosion up and down over what a million years or something like that and of course there's a river so every time we hit the beach and it's all exciting we get across the river and we got to go up and down yeah so that's the sequence of this hike it's all making sense now yeah yeah and yeah absolutely this the physical i'm going to say this again in a recap but the physical challenge is going up and down but the challenge of the hike isn't that. The challenge of the hike is timing your ability to go up and down with the tides and with the weather. You have to have good weather. If it rains, the rivers are too high and you're stuck. And you get stuck on one side of the river and you cannot cross. So we got to keep going so we can, <laughs> we got to just nail out as many river crossings as possible. Right. And there's a lot. Wow. All right, so this is Wolf Brook. We made it down, obviously. It was not as hard as it looked, but uh, Ryan just pointed out the tidal line. It's right back here. I just stepped over it. So the tide comes up this far. This is definitely one of the places where you can see the tide change. And there's no way you'd be able to cross this. So a uh, little, little trick -a -roo here. The trail is actually back where Ryan's going. It's upstream. And... Uh, you know, the guy I had my waypoints from, I just looked at the map and he couldn't find it because this whole area is just kind of a big blue trail blob where he walked. But uh, I, well, I turned on again because it's so neat to see, the, I just mentioned the river erosion. So the river comes around, right? Look at this, the carving of this mountain here. It's in a classic, you know, river bend. And then it goes to the ocean. Uh, how about this? And then this sort of thing happens. We go from a waterfall. Get in there. Holy like moly. Ooh. Now that's where the river lets out. I was a little upset we weren't going to see the beach. I guess we get to see the beach. Nova Scotia is looking pretty fine in the distance. Everybody talks about the Pacific Northwest. I'm here to say don't sleep on the Atlantic Northeast.
very beautiful views. Well, these have been some challenging kilometers. I don't know, I think Canadian kilometers are a little longer than normal, a little shorter than a mile, a little longer than a normal kilometer. But look at that view. Little salmon? Little salmon. Little salmon. Otherwise, we are on a switchback challenge on the descent down there. So that's what we're doing. 